So, yes. So, yeah. So, we have these kind of formal referral partners. So, the Trent Active Travel Hub, Breaking Ground, Scottish Wildlife Trust, Environmental Conservation Group, K Leisure Walks, and Tat Community Garden. Um, and we also have a TCV Green Gym as well, uh, my colleague Adeka runs. So these are projects that we build um, referral pathways for people recovering from various health conditions. Um, we have a formal referral pathway set up via KA Leisure. So people go into that. It's called uh, Active North Ayrshire. And they give a kind of detailed breakdown of their kind of health conditions, etc. And then KA Ledger will refer them on to any green health opportunities that they are interested in. But we also have kind of a system that we're building that's a signposting system. So people don't have to go through that form of referral route. Um, they can just go directly to these conservation groups as well if they're interested in them. And then the other thing that we were doing recently is our national evaluation. So a big thanks to everyone um, who contributed to this. So what it is, is our natural health service are pulling together this pilot evaluation of green health partnerships and what is the effectiveness of them and do they work and are we making any impact so we're gathering a lot of data and case studies around kind of all the um, activities or outdoor activities that are happening within North Ayrshire and we're trying to basically get a uh, kind of record if it's improving at all and um, with there being a green health partnership there and that was recording anything from volunteer numbers to sessions to meetings we were at and um, stalls that we delivered uh, case studies on uh, the green health network for example and its effectiveness etc so that's just a few updates on what we've been up to but the main thing is oh to show you the animation and hopefully fingers crossed it shows you with audio as well so this is something we we're working on recently that's going to be going out on the 12th of October, week commencing. So if anyone sees it on social media or in any avenues, please um, please uh, share it as much as possible. It's greatly appreciated. So this was an animation film that was put together with ourselves um, and Nature Scott. And it's basically a kind of a film that displays the kind of ease of getting outdoors and the benefits to your physical, mental health and uh, social well-being, but also like some locations that you can access within North Ayrshire. So I'm going to hit play and it's only about three minutes, so it's not very long. So it's just a kind of wee break up before we get into the main stuff. Thank you. 
can hear it popping in. I think we've got some new people, so hello to some new people if you've just joined us. Um, okay. Um, right. Can everyone still see that screen okay? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Right, so... It's just back. Is it back to this function? It's yeah. Just, yeah, it's just all... No. It's not full screen, yeah. What I might do, guys, actually, because I've realised is I can't actually see if you guys or if anyone's coming in the chat when it's full screen. So if it's okay with you guys, I might just leave it like that size. Is that okay? And I'll just make this a bit bigger. Can everyone still see that? No. All right, yeah. No, that... David, I've, I've only got you, David. It's Fiona. I've only got you. I don't see the presentation. Yeah, mm. I can't see the presentation. There's just either. people. There's no presentation. Okay. David. Did everyone see the video okay? Yes. Right, yeah, okay. yes. the video. Right, David, okay. I can accept anyone coming in the lobby, so that can right. be for you, okay? Right, thanks very much for that. Right, what I'll do is I'll just go back to full screen, sorry. I think it just popped off again. Right, everyone see that okay, yeah? Yeah, that's great. Right, okay, thanks very much for that. So, yeah, so what we're talking about and why we've got this on today is because we are doing the North Ayrshire Green Health Development Fund. Um, so it launched on the 14th of September. And the fund is for projects up to 1,500, 5,000 and 10,000. So as I said, it's open from the 14th of September and it will close at 9 a.m. Uh, Monday, the 23rd of November. So there's still a bit of time to apply for it at the moment, hence why we're having it kind of right now to talk about any things and also to give people opportunities um, still to apply. So the funding criteria, so what we want is to kind of demonstrate how you will meet the key aims of the North Ayrshire Green Health Partnership. So to get more people to use the outdoor environment more regularly, contribute to reducing health inequalities, improve mental health and well-being of local people. And these are kind of in line you know, with those like three pillars that I was talking about with our natural health service earlier on. So everyday contact with nature, nature-based health promotion initiatives and nature-based intervention with defined health or social outcomes. There's just a note at the bottom here saying objectives are included in the Green Health Development Fund 1, which is the criteria and on how groups can demonstrate achieving these aims and general guidance is included in the Green Health Development Fund Form 3, which is the kind of accompanying guidelines for the application form. So it's all in there and how best to kind of uh, use these or utilise these. So we also are looking for how will your activity contribute to Scotland's public health priorities? So if anyone doesn't know, then Scotland's public health priorities are Scotland where we live in vibrant, healthy and safe places and communities, a Scotland where we flourish in our early years, a Scotland where we have good mental well-being, a Scotland where we reduce the use of harm uh, from alcohol, tobacco and other drugs, uh, a Scotland where we have a sustainable inclusive economy with equality outcomes for all, and a Scotland where we eat well, have a healthy weight and are physically active. So. One of the things as well is obviously we can't get away from the times that we're in. Um, obviously, there's ongoing guidance all the time right now. There was another announcement today. Um, but what we want to see within the fund is people being able to um, explain how they can safely run activities, whatever it might be, um, within the kind of COVID kind of guidance or secure guidance. And what we've done within the kind of funding criteria, so their Green Health Development Fund one form, um, is we wanted to have like a few links in here basically to help guide people. So we're not saying this is exactly what you have to do. These are just good guidance for people to follow. So you've got the Health and Safety Executive, um, which has always got good kind of coronavirus um, safety measures. 
the conservation volunteers, we kind of regularly update our COVID secure guidance um, and we make it available for the public. So this is just stuff that we do. Um, you know, it's stuff from how we work in environments, how many volunteers we're allowed out, you know, our transport and um, the fact we can't have refreshments on site, all that kind of stuff. So it goes through a list of different things. Um, you've got general advice uh, around uh, managing uh, Scotland's parks and green spaces can be found uh, with that link. So that's just a big document and it's more about kind of green spaces uh, on different land and how best to use that. Uh, and then you've also got Scottish Community Development Council have a number of resources to support community organisations in general during COVID via the following link. So that's another one is there as well. So again, it's not hard and fast. These are the definite rules, but there's a lot of stuff in here that would be looking for people to kind of follow um, just safely as well. So who can apply? So applicants must be non for profit community groups slash organisation providing a service based in and serving the people of North Ayrshire local authority. So applicants must have a bank account and be constituted. Payment will be uh, backs. Uh, North Ayrshire Council Finance Department will need to see a copy of a bank statement prior to payment. Now I've had questions already from people that have applied previously via PB and other groups about this that they don't have a bank account but they, they would work with an organisation who they'd be partnering with who does have a bank account. These are fine as, as long as whoever is taking in the money um, has a bank account and you're working in partnership with the fund um, and that they are the main applicant and they'll be doing the reporting as well as you. Uh, the following exclusions will apply so we'll not support the promotion of any religious or political activity, ongoing costs, rent or costs incurred retrospectively, where there is an identified duplication of services or support, uh, applicants that will use the funding to further distribute the funds to other organisations, uh, one-off events or taster sessions, we will not accept applications directly from any statutory body, though they can be a collaborating partner. So as I was saying, kind of with the bank accounts, um, if you're statutory, you can still work with the community group and partner with that community group, voluntary organisation charity, as long as they're the one that's the main applicant, they're putting in the application form, they're receiving the funding, etc. You can still work in partnership with that organisation or help them with the fund. Uh, we will not accept applications directly from schools, nurseries, though they can be a collaborating partner. Again, same thing um, for anyone who works in schools or is potentially looking to work with schools in this. We have an example later on, but one of the examples from last year was St Mark's Primary, where the parent council applied for money to build a nature garden and um, where they built raised beds for food growing example. So it still works in terms of the same as from last year. So we will not accept applications from groups who previously received Green Health Partnership funding and have not completed the request evaluation forms from last year. This was just a decision that we we made that some groups um, did not get back to us at all. Um, they received funding and just never kind of got back to us with any kind of evaluation forms or anything. So this is why we wanted to put this in. Um, we will not fund routine maintenance and repairs. Those that do not demonstrate how they will safely deliver their project within the COVID secure guidance available. So again, kind of previously touching on uh, two slides before. So those who have previously returned their GHP funding have returned their evaluation form, etc. So encouraged to reapply. So yeah, definitely. If there's any projects that applied from last year and um, that want to continue that funding or build upon that funding, then definitely we encourage that um, or any kind of new projects, etc. So the kind of application form process. So um, application forms and the Green Health Development Form 1 and Green Health Development Form 3, uh, the guidance notes that I mentioned before, they can all be downloaded from uh, www.nagreenhealth.org.uk. Uh, some people have said to me sometimes the link doesn't work. It's true, it can be a wee bit temperamental, but sometimes if you hit refresh on it, it will load and it is there. It's just sometimes it works for some reason and sometimes it doesn't for some people. I do not know why, technology. Um, you can also use this incredibly long um, link here, but it's also on the North Ayrshire Community Partnership Planning pages as well. Uh, and you can request a copy from Claire Carson, uh, either on that number or to her email address. Uh, and you'll be sent those three forms. Um, I've sent them out already to the Green Health Network. Um, so people who are on that Green Health Network will have received the forms. If they haven't, they can get them from me as well. 
So what happens? So your application will be logged. You'll be sent an acknowledgement of a receipt with a unique reference number for your application when we get it in. Uh, your application is assessed by the valuation panel and a decision made if your application is successful or unsuccessful. So if you're unsuccessful, we'll email you to let you know our decision and we'll provide you with the reasons for the decision on request. If successful, we will email you with an offer letter outlining the terms and conditions of the funding award, and next steps, including payment arrangements. Successful applicants sign and return the offer letter slash funding agreement by Friday 8th of January 2021 for payment funding. So we'll monitor the progress of the um, fund and the project off of the original aims that um, the fund was uh, originally meant for as well. So just going over this again, kind of in more detail with the different funds. So as we said, there's funds for 1,500, 5,000 and 10,000. Funds awarded over 5K will be made in two payments, so the 10K ones. So the GHP senior product officer is required to visit in person or virtually six months post payment. Those projects awarded more than 5,000. So this is kind of dependent, obviously, on kind of current COVID restrictions. But this is something that with the 10K projects, we just basically wanted there to be a kind of point midway through where I was able to kind of have a project visit and then um, Naturally, what would happen is obviously if we're allowed to visit, I could go down to the project site. We could chat um, and just see how you're getting on with finances, materials, support needed, etc. Um, if we can't do that because of restrictions, then I'll have to do it virtually. And what I'll probably do is have to make up some kind of, not form, but kind of almost like an inter interviewee kind of questions based off of what we maybe need to know kind of thing about how you're getting on etc but it's all just basically based off of support and to make sure that you're kind of still continuing and getting on well with them um, the kind of original aims of the fund that you were going for and um, all successful applicants will be required to monitor their project to contribute to the evaluation of the green health partnership and the overall our natural health service program and um, we'll talk a bit about that later on and um, if you need support or are worried about the progress of the project please make us aware uh, we're not nasty people. We're um, we're very open and very supportive. If there's anything you're worried about, like I say, we'll repeat like loads of times tonight. COVID nineteen, it's you know there's flexibility within some of the stuff that is potentially going to have to happen. Just let us know. Uh, yeah, in general, just please please keep good lines of communication with us. And um, just communicate with us any issues or anything that's happening. So all successful applicants will be expected to attend local or virtual Green Health Network events. So similar to this, if there's restrictions in place, it will be virtual. If not, then we'll try and organise something local in the, in the different localities uh, where the projects are. And just to note that all these details that we're going to be talking about tonight kind of thing and in these slides, this is all in the kind of Green Health Development Fund one as well. So the evaluation process that I touched upon just before. So the this is something that we really wanted to emphasize this time around because it's kind of very important for the funds not just kind of to get information from you guys but also to kind of feedback to our natural health service and to report on as i said previously within our kind of green health partnership updates we are finalizing the kind of report um from the green health development fund from 2018-19 so out of 31 groups that applied we got 21 evaluation forms back um, and there was kind of varying levels of kind of answers and um, detail. Um, there is a kind of level of there was hardly any detail sometimes, and then there was loads of amazing detail. So there's a healthy balance. It's not like we're asking for a 50 page dissertation, but we do need details. We need case studies. We need answers. We need to know what you've been doing, how you were using the money. So some of the questions that we'll be asking just to go through it so that you're aware of it now rather than just all of a sudden you know near the end of the project or halfway through you're given this evaluation form you're like oh my goodness i didn't know you were going to have that much is just kind of outtakes from the kind of pillars so what pillars were you aiming to achieve so the kind of everyday contact with nature was it health promotion initiative so your everyday contact with nature sorry so was it like kind of promotion maps leaflets promoting projects, promoting walking, or was it public, Was it the kind of um, health promotion? Was it a health walk or a green gym that you started? Was it a community food growing, et cetera? Or was it that kind of um, specific targeted group? So previous examples from last year were a dementia-friendly food growing project. So 
specifically targeting those that suffered from dementia to try and get some specific outcomes for that. Um, public health priorities, so which of those six priorities that we went over beforehand, which ones are you looking to um, tick off or which ones are you aiming to do and kind of the key aims of the partnership as well. So those are just basic kind of like what your project is aiming to do and within that like you know where you're hitting these kind of different aims and objectives. Um, so activity services you've delivered under the above pillars priorities aims as a result of the funding. So this is just talking about what you actually did and achieved um, as part of the project under these. Um, was it, for example, targeting elderly within a community um, that suffers from social isolation? So you delivered a health walk or you delivered a food grown project, for example. And what did you do? Uh, what kind of activities? What kind of food did you grow? Like, where did you walk, etc.? So all that kind of stuff. Um, overcoming difficulties. So if there was any difficulties, struggles throughout it, then detail, please, what those were, because it helps us learn. It gives us good feedback. Um, and it helps us potentially support as well. Uh, number of people are engaged in target audience. So this is really important because we want to know how many people, obviously, that you're working with. So recording that is so important, like the amount of people that you're targeting, working with events, events, um, whether it's kids or whether it's kind of volunteer numbers, etc. How many sessions did you deliver? Um, in your target audience, was it kids at school, was it elderly, was it um, youth groups, was it ethnic minority groups? All these things are really important in building up that. Um, case studies, case studies are really important and these are some of the most like interesting and powerful reads. Um, some of the case studies we got back from some of our projects from uh, last year's fund were amazing, like some really powerful stories of people who really struggled um, and found like an amazing relief and so much benefits from taking part in some of these activities. Uh, these are really, really important as well. Um, and these kind of, um, again, feed up to our, kind of, our natural health service. These are the things that really show us this is why we do it, for example. Um, financial breakdown and funding. So this is just very simple, just so that people give us a kind of a detailed breakdown of their costs. So what did they buy? Was it timber for raised beds? You know, was it plants? wildflowers, um, seeds for vegetables, etc., and just kind of um, any extra funding that you received or match funding that you used on top of that for this project. Um, and a kind of breakdown of just keep your receipts, keep your invoices, all that kind of stuff so that people, um, so you can scan it or take a picture of it and send all that kind of stuff for us so that we have it for our records. Um, any support, so that's kind of support that you might need um, or you kind of, tie in with the kind of difficulties of what you're overcome and like maybe you are coming across like issues and you desperately need support to do X, Y, Z, etc. Uh, the Green Health Network, so that's just kind of surveys based on did you attend the Green Health Network um, as part of the project kind of cycle? Um, did you enjoy it? Was it useful, etc.? Um, is there any extra training that we should be getting out to different groups kind of thing or any training that you think you should need? And then the Green Health Referral section kind of ties back to what I was talking about earlier on where we have our Green Health Referral Partners. So if people or projects would be interested in also being inclu included within that kind of those kind of Green Health Referral projects and were interested in taking on referrals, either kind of formal referrals via that KA Leisure Active North Ayrshire route, or if they're happy to have people signposted to them, then that's kind of that opportunity to say that, yes, our project, we feel like we'd be able to support that, we're interested in that, um, and this is the kind of support we feel we would need in order to achieve that. So those are the kind of evaluation questions. We're probably going to get them sorted is probably pretty quickly, and we'll probably hopefully send that stuff out, um, if not with the kind of uh, successful application kind of uh, award, but uh, soon after that, so that people have it with plenty of time and they can ask us questions about the evaluation and what we're asking of people. So that's evaluation. Publicity. So. For example, groups must acknowledge contribution of North Ayrshire Green Health Partnership where possible. Um, any kind of papers, reports, acknowledge the grantor's support in any published documents using statement provided. Promote and tag the North Ayrshire Green Health Partnership, any green health via Facebook, Twitter and other social media channels. So this is just um, an opportunity to, for us really just to keep on top of what you're doing as well. So 
A great example last year, um, just one of the groups was uh, Cumbria Bee Ecology, were like always on Twitter, always on Facebook, posting stuff that they were doing with the project, etc. And that's great for us because it means that we can constantly see updates and see what they're doing with the the fund, and it gives us kind of this kind of great kind of I guess building up a case study of what they're doing with it as well, and it's a great way to communicate with, and we can share as well and kind of promote it through that stuff. Um, so the North Ayrshire Green Health Partnership reserves the right to publish details of the project in papers, journals, etc., other media. So that's just probably gathering stuff from the evaluation form uh, and putting it into that. Carry out any form of publicity and marketing as it seems fit. Request assistance with any form of publicity and marketing, including press or media related activities. The applicant must agree to share their project details, including contact details with Green Health Partnership Network. So that's just basically saying that um, if you are going to be successful, we would like you to be a part of the Green Health Network and attend that Green Health Network as well. Um, and again, full publicity details sorry, are available in that kind of criteria document, the Green Health Development Form 1. So that's publicity. Terms and conditions. So there's quite a lot to cover in these. So applicants must be able to spend funding within 12 months of receipt of them. An application for funds up to 1,500, 5,000 and 10,000 can be submitted. However, no group will be awarded funding in more than one category. So you can apply for more than one, but we can't fund you for more than one category. The applicant agrees to meet all laws regulating the way it operates, the works it carries out, the staff they employ and the goods that it buys where applicable. All necessary permission will be obtained by the applicant, e.g. PVG. Please note we may require to see these. The applicant will maintain adequate insurance at all times where applicable. Funding not spent or committed by 12 months will be reclaimed by the grantor. The grant must be used exclusi exclusively for the project and only by the applicant and only in accordance with the details in the application. The applicant will manage the project and be fully, fully responsible for all aspects of implementation. The grantor reserves the right to request detailed accounts to ensure funds have been spent and the purposes for which they are intended. Again, this is all on the Green Health Development Form 1. Um, so this is just really a kind of breakdown of some of the projects that were uh, successful from the Development Fund from 2018-19. These are just very kind of quick edits. So I mentioned before St Mark's Primary Parent Council in Irvine. So building plan planters and planting garden plants, etc. for a school nursery. Uh, we had Iron Community Land Initiative, horticultural therapy sessions for those uh, with health and wellbeing issues. Uh, we visited this project back in November of last year and it's a very interesting site and the very lovely people basically explaining that they wanted to be able to open up their sessions to those that uh, had complex health needs and give them a space to develop skills, confidence, knowledge, etc. Uh, the game project, so allotment growing is a medium for people affected with dementia and kill winning, the one that I mentioned earlier on. So that's that pillar that's the specific intended outcomes for those with specific um, health conditions. Cumbria Bee Ecology, promoting awareness of bees in our local environment. Uh, Coast, creating 20 seashore explorer backpacks for hire. Iron High School Mountain Biking Club, building a year round network trail for maintenance volunteers. So they're very like, that's not all of the stuff that they did. There's also loads more detail into what these groups um, achieved and what they did with that money. But that's just a very quick synopsis um of what these kind of groups um done but it's just to kind of give you an idea of the kind of variety of different activities that were going on um with the fund last year and who was able to apply so what i would like to do is uh, allow uh, rosemary to go over her sections of the fund so i believe i can give you Oh no, I can't give you control. Sorry. I was just going to ask that question, David. Do I have control or do I have to do what they do when they do a Downing Street presentation for COVID? Next slide, please. Well, I think we'll will we do that because I don't I don't think I can. I can only uh -huh. seem to give permission to Adeka for some reason. Right. I don't so, know if it's so, so we'll emulate Downing Street then. <laughs> yeah, just go for that. Just go for next slide. So I'll just um again, people can ask me questions at the very end over anything that I've talked about, but what I'll do is I'll just allow Rosemary to go over some stuff right now. Rosemary, so take it away. Okay, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Rosemary Fotheringham. I'm the funding officer with North Ayrshire Council uh, and I've just come along tonight uh, basically to give a brief overview of um, 
completing a funding application form. I have sort of tailored it slightly to obviously uh, the Green Health Partnership Development Fund. And I'm also going to talk you through some sources of match funding um, from North Ayrshire Community Funds. And also I'm going to speak to you about sources of external funding, not specific funds, but where you can probably find uh, some more information. So um, are you ready for funding? A basic question, but there are a few things you need to think about, obviously. Oh, have you gone to mute, Rosemary? Hello? Sorry, folks, I think I must have hit the mute button. <laughs> Sorry about that. So how far in did you hear that? It just it was just an overview. So I'll I'll, I'll start again. I mean, just, the, if you're looking to apply, then you, you'll need to have a constitution memorandum of articles. Um, this is your group's governing document and sets out what you can and can't do. Um, you, you, your objects, do the activities fit with the required outcomes of a fund? You know, it may be that you're looking to apply for something, uh, but when you actually look at what you can and can't do, it might not always be a fit. So if you've got a constitution, I would read through it, make sure that you are a fit for the fund. A written plan for your project. Now, the reason I'm saying that is you need to know what is the need for your project. Uh, describe the reason you want it. That That's part of your written project. Who will benefit from your project? You know, have, do you have details? Do you know who's going to benefit from the project? And how will they benefit? How will the users benefit? How will the community benefit from this? It always helps beforehand if you've got this written down as a sort of a plan and the evidence of the need for the project. How do you know that that project is required? Have, have you asked the community? Have you spoken to folks? So it's just simple things like that. The other thing is policies and insurance. And I was, uh, as David mentioned, with COVID, there are so many things that you need to be doing. Do you have a, a procedures or policies for, for COVID insurances? If, if you're working with the public, do you have public liability? Um, maybe if you're working with children, do you need child protection policies? So before you even think about applying, do you have these things in place? The other thing I would say is, is looking at finances. Now, there are a number of things. Now, you need the first thing is, do you have a bank account? Now, I, I think for this particular fund, they are looking for a bank account. As Davis had said previously, with PB, there are occasions where you can maybe have an umbrella body. But have you got a bank account in place? What do you, what do you need to buy? Do you need equipment? Is it support for volunteers? Again, be aware of what you need to buy. And do you have the costs for these? You know, do you have quotes and estimates for the equipment that you want to buy? You need to be aware of how how much funding do you really need, and can you get all of this funding from that particular funder from the Green Health Partnership? Well, you need where will the rest come if you need to get additional funding? That's the match funding, and I will uh, come to that later on in the presentation. The other thing is, do you have? Uh, your most recent audited accounts and or income expenditure, are they up to date? Most funders will want to see these as well. Uh, next slide, please. Always. <laughs> now, the, first and foremost, when, when completing an application form, and I know it sounds basic, but read the guidelines. Make sure you know what the funder's looking for, what the criteria is, and do you, do you fit with that? And wh when you're filling in the application, be clear and positive and concise about this. You don't need to write war and peace. If you, you, you sort of state what the project's about. It's the who, why, what, where, when again. And as I say, that to me is probably the most important thing before you complete any application. Read the guidelines. Next one, please. Thank you. Again, just, just highlighting again, make sure you read the guidelines. Criteria, do you fit the funding criteria? Does your project fit? Um, how? Do, and, and I think David had mentioned earlier this Scotland's public health priorities. How does the project fit with these? Can, can you can you evidence that? Have, and when completing that, ensure that all the questions are answered. And it is very easy to skip over a question. Always review 
your application prior to submission. And I think one of the most beneficial people you ever have is a critical friend. That is somebody that can perhaps be a bit more objective because I'm sure you're all all the same. If you've been completing a, an application form, you bet sometimes it reads what you think it does. But if you've got someone else that can come in with a fresh eye and read through that, it's invaluable. They will probably see things that you have got so used to reading and you miss through. So critical friend just to read through is always a they can make comments, you can speak you know, speak to them. It's very helpful. Next one, please, David. Right. Again, hints and tips. Double check your budget. As I said, make sure you know what you're looking for funding for, how much it's going to cost, and make just make sure that everything adds up. You know, just make sure that you know what you're asking for, how much it's going to cost. Deadlines, and I, I, you, you wonder why I'm saying deadlines. It's so easy to leave things to the last minute, and then you find that you're perhaps missing a deadline, or you get waylaid and you, you've missed it completely, and you've put all that hard work into your application, and you've missed that deadline. So again, make sure that you've got everything completed and ready to go prior to the actual deadline date. That's not to say that people don't do it, but if it's an online application, portals can clog up. It can be, you, know, you can miss the deadline for all sorts of reasons. Make sure you've got all your attachments. Like I said earlier, have you got your bank statement? Do you have your constitution? If there are policies and procedures that are required to go with the application, have you got these? Are these all ready to go? And the other thing is, have you signed, have you signed and dated your application? And then um, it's important most days if, if it's electronic, then electronic signature and data, but just make sure that you've done that. And again, David was talking about the conditions of grants earlier. Make sure that uh, you read through the conditions of grant and that you're actually able to fulfill these. Are you, you are you able to meet the evaluations that are required? And finally, hit, hit the send button on your email. Uh, make sure that it has actually gone. Thank you. Next one, please. What I'm moving on to now is just um, North Ayrshire uh, Council Community Funds. Um, just give you, I'm going to give you an overview of what we've got, what's available. You can see the link at the bottom of the page takes you to our community funding page, and you will see all of these on there and, pro, and a couple of more. But the first one, um, we're looking at Common Goods Community Benefit Fund. North Ayrshire Venture Trust, Participatory Budgeting, Scottish Landfill and the, the Town Charitable Community Funds. And if we can move on to the next one, uh, just tell you a bit about the Common Good Funds. Common Good Funds are available to communities in Ardross and Avran, Lags and Stevenson. They're, they're not across North Ayrshire, they, they are allocated to certain geographical areas. Applications for the Common Good Funds uh, must benefit all or a significant number of these those living in the area. I would say that there's there's no upper or lower limits, but generally speaking, applications are between 500 and 10,000 pounds. So if you're based in Ardrossan, Avon, Lags, Stevenson, there are, you, you get, there, there are funds through the Common Good Funds. Um, next, please, David. Uh, moving on from that, we have got the Town Charitable Trust Funds, and again, they are specific to, to uh, certain geographical areas. Um, Town Charitable Trust Funds are available in Kilburnie and Glengarnock, Dorai, Cowinning and Largs. Now, there are um, three specific criteria for this. Uh, the first one being the prevention and relief of poverty. Uh, the second one is, and section, pro, provision of B is probably the one that is most suited to this fund, and that is provision of recreational facilities or the organisation of recreational activities with the, the, sub, the aim of improving conditions of life for those taking part. And C, the third one, is the relief of those in need of a uh, reason of ill health, disability, financial hardship or other disadvantages. Um, some, somebody want to ask a question? Do we'll take these at the end? Um, I'll need to skip out of it, but is someone asking a question? I'll just go into it. Uh, yep, we have two questions. Sorry, um, can you? Fiona, I, I think it was Fee. Hi, Rosemary. Nice to meet you. Hi. Um, 
and Fiona from West Kilbride Community uh, Support Group. I was just wondering, see with the way COVID's changed a lot of the, the sort of well, the sort of economic structure in a lot of areas. Will it be will it be at some point reviewed um, the areas that we consider disadvantaged? There is a pocket in West Kilbride that's I, I, disadvantaged. In terms, so. in terms of the town charitable trust funds and the common yeah. good funds, these these are uh, endowments and legacies that have been there for a while, and the geographical area won't won't change. And for example, the Town Child Trust Fund, primarily it's poverty that is, is the main aims of, of yeah. that fund. So yeah. I would say that is probably more relevant now than ever in yeah. terms of COVID-19. But that, with regards to the areas that people, sorry, I didn't, my computer's stuttering a bit. <laughs> the, I didn't know if <laughs> I was... The, the, the areas, we, we wouldn't be able to extend these beyond the, these specific right. funds cover, you know, there are certain areas and the yeah. funds were set aside for okay. these areas. Right. OK, so even if the sort of like there, there are particular restrictions would, would stay in place, but even if the sort of the, the yeah, way things are... Yeah, you couldn't extend the boundaries. For ex yeah, for example, okay. West Bride couldn't apply to the Larks Town Charitable Trust. Oh, no, no, I know that. I know that. Yeah, I was just I was just thinking like with everything changing so much, if some of the boundaries of these sort of what was considered disadvantaged areas might change like as time goes on, that's all. The, 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 Again, when we're looking at funding, that you have to remember that SMD does come into it. And, and um, yeah. if you can demonstrate you know, and you've got the evidence, then funders will take that into account. Okay. But with regards to the North Asia Council trusts and common yes. good funds, the, the boundaries are, are set. OK, that's great. Thanks for answering that. Um, just we have another question from someone else. Um, <laughs> they've got the website name there, but one of the things I wanted to just quickly say is the reason we put this in, by the way, as part of this was so that these are funds that you could match with the Green Health Development Fund. This is basically, or if you weren't successful, for example, unfortunately not everyone can be successful. These are other funds that you could apply for potentially as well. Uh, sorry, someone else has got their hand up, the www.nagreenhealth.org.uk. Sorry, I can't remember your name, so I'm just calling you the full <laughs> website name now. So apologies, sorry, on you go. Can you unmute yourself? You just have, to, have you got it? I'll well, just do it. I'll unmute. Sorry. I'll, uh... Oh, there we go. You're, un you're unmuted. Yeah. So, unmute. hi, I'm Sally Logan and I'm in Beath. And what I was really just saying, you know, you've mentioned Coburnley, Dorigal, and Garnock, but Beath's not mentioned. You know, is there, is there Sorry, no you, poverty in Beath? Beath, the, the, Beath there was a Beath trust, but uh, uh, the, the money's, uh, it was wound up. Because okay. the, the monies within that had been had been uh, spent, you know, just, uh, over the years it had had gone down. Uh, or what happens with some of these some other funds is there's money coming in. For example, I'll come to it in the North Asia Venture Trust, where there is money generated from rentals. And certainly the Stevenson Town Trust, uh, Stevenson, the, 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 there's yeah, you know, it, it's sometimes from rentals, and it's just that over the years it dwindles to the point where the the it becomes inactive, so it is then wound up. So there, there, there was um, one at one point for beef, but that that has been wound up now. Okay, thanks. Uh, if you just lower your hand and uh, mute yourself again, Sally, um, if that's okay. Gavin, did you have something to add, or did you have a question? Um, no, just just to say that um, I think Mr. Marjorie about the the sim data is very important. There is a fantastic website where you can actually tunnel down into each postcode almost. It's very graphic way of doing it, and it, it'll it'll quite clearly tell you what postcodes are sim datas, which every um, funder will actually accept. If you can say we're working with people from that area, then why it might not fit what the town trusts but it's certainly other funders will do it the other question i was going to ask david is and this is usually is there's usually a start and a finish date for this funding uh -huh. considering how long COVID is going and considering the age group of some of the groups i'm trying to encourage to get involved and they're very reluctant to be out and about um, and yeah. do you have a spend by date or a, a finish date for this fund because if it's, people don't start moving till February, March next year, which is for some groups really how they're looking at their forward planning, it yeah. might make so, it tight for them to be spending money. So it'd be quite clear to say you have to have it spent or it's an open 
for six months beyond. So it's at your discretion, is it? We don't, I mean, Gillian can pop in with this as well, because I'm not the only one that will be on the panel and stuff like that. I'm just obviously speaking right now and doing the presentation. But we know we would like, for example, in an ideal world that it could be spent within the 12 months of receiving that application. We know from experience from our colleagues up in the Highlands and Islands who had actually delivered their Green Health Development Fund and then COVID happened that it doesn't always happen in an ideal world and they did extend it by six months so it was 18 months. It just depends totally on what happens. Uh, Gillian, I don't know if you want to add anything to be honest with that. It's very it's very difficult because we don't really know what's mm. going to happen but we wouldn't like to say oh that's too you know that's too bad kind of thing but on you go Gillian sorry. I, th I think that, like you say, I think um, in an ideal world it would be spent within the 12 months, but we're not in an ideal world at the moment with anything. And I think even just getting the fund out there at the moment was a big challenge, given the fact that it was delayed from earlier in the year. So um, I think we just have to work with what we know at the moment and provide us. And I think the key thing as well is just keeping a good line of communication with David at all times. So if groups are struggling to get the money spent, um, then obviously keeping that um, open line of communication that we can then feed that back because ultimately our funders are, are you know our national partners so Nature Scott and um, Transport Scotland you know we need to show that we're um, you know that, that the money's been used um, and it's been used within the, the criteria that's been set but I think given the situation at the moment I think we're just going to have to wait and see as I say aim to have it spent within 12 months if there's any problems then it's that conversation with um, and keeping in touch with us yeah. sorry we can't be any more specific but no, no it's it's um, a number of groups we're working with three towns are basically i wouldn't say hiding under stone but they're, they're just not meeting that they're mm. if they're like donald mcclarty at the main shed that they've, they've discovered the uh, zoom and uh, they're talking to each other but some other groups aren't some of the sort of older generation groups who may be interested in doing some of this is, is uh, um, are just not meeting or don't seem to be communicating, which is a shame. Um, so we're still trying to sort of. But I guess that's one of the reasons why it's been quite a big decision for us to actually put it out because we do know that the challenges that are out there at the moment are ever changing. Um, yeah. Every week there's something new and, and we understand that that just adds another dimension um, in terms of groups and, and committing to applications uh, for funding. So, um, yeah, it's just... It, I think aim to demonstrate that you're going to be able to do it. None of us know what's going to happen in the next couple of months, so we're just going to have to be as flexible as we can. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that, uh, Gavin. An important question. Um, right. I'll go back to the presentation. Uh, there we go. Right. Do you want to just uh, continue? The, 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 that, the, that was basically the overview of the Town Charitable Trust. If nobody's got any questions, I'll move on to the Community Benefit Fund. There you go. The Community Benefit Fund, again, it's, it's geographic, geographically targeted. Um, North Ayrshire Council administers uh, this on behalf of Infinis, who uh, operate their Dross and Wind Farm. So therefore, it is focused on that area. Uh, groups that can apply are can come from Adros and Salkut, Stevenson and Aaron, uh, and there's a ceiling of um, grants of up to around 4,000 uh, for the three towns, and it's up to 1,000 for Aaron. So, and that th this this um, we sort of goes rolling. You know, it can go for delegated powers, but uh, obviously there's an environmental focus with this as well. So. You can again access this via the, the, the link on here to online, but it's worthwhile mentioning if you're in these particular areas, then you, you can apply to, to this as a match. Um, do you want to move on to the next one? Here you go. The, the, the next fund is the North Ayrshire Venture Trust. And as I was saying, 
Um, North Ayrshire Registers Trust, uh, the, the income from that is generated from rentals and things like that. Um, and it, it, there are two sort of levels of funding that that, that offers. It offers a short term grants of up to £10,000. And that, these have to be spent, spent over 12 months or the, the longer term grants, which are over um, three years and they can be for £30,000. The, the fund is open to constituted groups uh, and grants will cover things like staff posts, equipment, uh, revenue costs, uh, marketing and websites. Uh, and the main criteria for uh, the Venture Trust uh, is that pro projects must have an economic benefit to North Asia and fit obviously with, with North Asia's uh, local outcomes and national strategic policies. Um, Julia Whitaker is the dedicated officer for that. So if it's something you were interested in, we, we yeah, I would point you in the direction of Julia. Uh, she she works closely with anybody that's applying to this fund. Want to move on to the next one? Um, again, just um, North Ayrshire, the, the, the Land Trust, uh, administers the Scottish Landfills Community Fund on behalf of North Ayrshire Council. Um, North Ayrshire Council contributes some of its landfill uh, tax towards environmental improvements projects uh, and the range, there is a range of criteria for the projects. I've set these out but the one that I think is probably the most relevant uh, is where there are projects uh, to restore where is it? and repair buildings, no, to, to maintain public amenities and parks within 10 miles of landfill site and, and they will support that, that type of work. There's a lot of environmental things. Um, if you go to their website, you'll get see examples of the funds awarded in the range. They can go from 5,000 up to, I think uh, I had seen one award of £700,000, but that, that is off the bigger pot. But uh, again, it's on our community's funding website and it, it would probably be a good fit with this fund. If we can move on to the next one. Um, David again mentioned that Green Health Partnership had uh, carried out a participatory budgeting event. Was that last year? Yeah, it was over 2018-19. The, yeah. the first Green Health Development Fund was delivered through. And North Ayrshire Council, we, we, I don't know if you any of you had applied to for in the past to the Nurture and Excellence in Communities Fund. Now that, that has now closed and all the monies from that has been transferred to be used for participatory budgeting. It just allows, PB allows an inclusive way to, to allow local authorities to get the community to help them decide how they spend the funds. Uh, obviously, with COVID, there have been delays in this. Um, in the past, we would have run marketplace events. Um, I, it looks as though we were, were going to have to go to look at an online voting and we are looking to try and launch a P, PB event, P, or PB events, because these will be focused in each of the localities. We will be having locality PB events and we're probably looking about uh, launching uh, beginning the next, uh, into February next year. I don't have exact dates, but um, watch this space. So there will be locality PB events in 2021 uh, as soon as soon as we have the details we'll be we'll be obviously publicizing them and finally um sources of external funding i haven't given any specifics on, on external funding uh providers quite simply because you'll all have different projects and you'll be looking at different sources of funding but i have uh I'm in the process of pulling together an A to Z of funders, which I'm going to send through to David once it's complete. And if, if it's something you're interested in, we can get it circulated. Meantime, we have we at North Ayrshire Council have access to the IDOCS grant finder. And if you're looking for specific funds, we can carry out a search on your behalf, targeting uh, whatever you're looking for. Funding Scotland, do they offer a free service? That's part of SCVO. You can you can go on there. You can also pay a bit more. You, you can pay a, a fee to them and you can get greater access to funding. Uh, North Ayrshire Community Toolkit, uh, the TSI, uh, uh, the Ayrshire Community Trust and CVS North, and, and Aaron uh, run this community toolkit and they have access to a free find a funder database. It, 
can be, it's, it's not very wide, but it is still quite a good tool. It's a really useful tool. And I've just put in here the STVO coronavirus third sector information hub because that also sets out other funding and there are there are funds related to coronavirus there, but not just that. So that is another link. And I had completed the slides and realised that I hadn't mentioned North Ayrshire Virtual Funding Centre page, which I post up as soon as I find out about funds and whatever, I will put them up on the, the Facebook page. So if you're not following it, I would suggest that you do, because I do try to get things out as soon as, as soon as they come up. That, as I say, is a very brief overview of funding applications and match funding. Any questions, I'm happy to take them at the end. Thank you. Thanks for that, Rosemary. I was actually about to say actually about the Facebook page when I didn't see it there. I was going to mention. <laughs> I know. I'm I know forgetting that. Because <laughs> I know you're always posting stuff in there, and I'm always seeing stuff, so I'm always like poking my head and like to see what's going on. So yeah, thanks very much for that. Um, I think I'll need to move to this view. Um, let me just check something. Yeah, that's fine. Right. So. This is kind of a point where anyone can ask any questions, um, anything to do with the slides, the application forms, the guidance, criteria, anything else um, that we've covered, etc. It's time to kind of for people to ask questions. Um, if you raise your hand, I'll try and go through them as uh, quickly as possible. Marjorie, I meant the, the hand thing on the Teams, but it's OK. You can ask a question if you want via that. Can you unmute yourself, Marjorie? Two seconds, I'll try and do it. Can I do that? I must be able to. Sorry. Can you unmute yourself, Marjorie, at all? Can you see there should be like an unmute button somewhere? Right. Oh, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> Three wee buttons that go to. Yeah. Right. Right. My name's Marjorie Dickey. I'm chairperson of Castle Park Community Centre in Irvine. During it, we have a community garden and uh, with flowers, etc. Benches, uh, water features, and we also have a community garden for fruit and veg. Uh, the community garden uh, likes of the older people now at the walk room Castle Park and then they go and sit in the garden if it's a nice night. And all the fruit and veg that's taken out the garden, we use that for the lunch club. Sure. Uh, which is for elderly people. Right. But during COVID, during COVID uh, this has all been vandalised. And we're going to have to start from scratch. So, is that something that your fund would help? Would use if we apply for funding? Would we be looked looked at favourably, or is it something that we wouldn't be able to apply for? Um, I'll call upon uh, Gillian can answer as well. I think. So, are you saying it was vandalised, and you're looking for funds to help repair the vandalisation of it? I, they've pulled all the plants out, they've pulled all the fruit and veg out, they've destroyed me memorial benches, they've destroyed the water, they've actually destroyed the whole garden. Uh, I, they've, it's really, we need to start from scratch. I think, to be honest, Marjorie, see if it was, see if it was part of a fund that was to say we wanted to deliver X, Y, Z, then that's slightly different. Uh -huh. It's just repairing stuff, then that's maybe not something that we would think it needs to be a bit more. So an example would be, it, so an example I would say was that someone was came to me and asked me like, oh, we have this idea of it's at a bowling club and there's just, just green space and we want to put in benches. And what I was trying to say was uh -huh. that basically that's okay, but what else could you do with the green space? Could you plant stuff? Could you have sessions in it? You know, and then that feeds towards there. So if it was part of a larger project that you are working on, and the repairs were part of that project, then that's different instead of just saying, oh, we want to repair some stuff, if you know what I mean. Does that make sense, Gillian? I, do you want I, to add anything to that? Think, I don't think, I, I know what you're coming for, but I don't think we actually would be repairing it. We're, we're going to have to start from scratch because right. 
everything that's been destroyed, uh, everything that was there is away. Yeah. The, okay. there's, I, think, I think there's one wee bench left uh, and everything else has been destroyed. But we're going to have to start from scratch. So, yeah. Jillian, do you want to, are you going to come in? Uh, yeah, no, I was just going to say, I think a, a bit like you, David, I suppose the, the thing is that it's not ongoing maintenance. Um, mm. As such, it's, it sounds like it, you will need to have a group of people that are willing to develop the garden as it is now. And I guess it's how you organise that and how you link that in with um, the aims of um, the Green Health Partnership, so around um, you know improving people's mental health, getting people physically active, um, engaging in nature. It's how uh, I would certainly encourage you to put an application forward um, because it's about moving forward now. How your project mm -hmm. is going to address the you know um, the requirements, but also engage local community members to to develop what you have. Yeah, yeah. And it could, it could be that like it's the funds go towards something that's like if you're talking about like benches, it's like anti vandalizing benches and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? And it's part of that as well. But it's like, like Gillian says, it's like part of that wider project kind of thing. And a uh, building right. that. does that make sense? Yeah, I that's fine. I that makes sense. So we can apply and we'll, I yeah, right, that's fine. I know what so you're the other thing as well is right. like, um, separate to this. Like I'm obviously running the um, Mondays and Fridays. I'm running virtual drop-in sessions, like virtual Q and A sessions, like this, just an hour, two to three p.m. And people can ask right. me questions like that on those days, um, or they can phone me or email me any questions throughout their kind of application process about it. Um, right. Helen, did you have your uh, hand up? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for a really interesting presentation. It's been really helpful. Um, I've got quite a few ideas, but um, I was just wondering, would it be possible for you to make the presentation available um, to us so that we can, so I can share it with some of my colleagues? Yeah, sure. That's no problem. Yeah, I mean, there's just notes in there um, for me to talk about. I can just get rid of that and I can send that to anyone. If anyone... Um, if anyone is interested from here that wants the presentation, then just send me an email after this um, or during it whenever you want to, and I can send you a copy of that presentation. Um, that, yeah. That's great. Thanks very much. No worries. And thank just, you for the compliment. Just, right. And you go, Jillian. Sorry, I can't find my hand. It's disappeared. Um, <laughs> uh, just to highlight as well that the presentation, obviously we couldn't fit every um, piece of information on the criteria um, and terms and conditions on there. So there are a few slides that just have kind of key examples. But if you've got a few ideas or some things, some you know, things that you're interested in, it, it's probably worth getting the application forms sent to you. So that you've got all of the information on there, because obviously the PowerPoint couldn't, we couldn't encapsulate everything that's on the uh, every form. So just to bear that in mind. Yeah, we we're very conscious when we we're pulling this together to give people enough information, but not bore you to death. Like it could be like a full day's worth of a presentation, just going through every single detail, and we wanted to avoid that as much as possible. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? They can use the hand function. Because um, unfortunately, I can't see everyone because there's 29 of us in here. So um, either use the hand function or if anyone wants to just jump in and uh, unmute themselves and ask a question, then that's completely fine as well. If anyone wants to go for it. Oh, no. Oh, we've got, yep, we've got a few people. Uh, I don't know who was first out of the two there. So what I'll do is I'll go to Blair Kerr first, if you want to. Unmute yourself, Blair, and then just ask me uh, if you want to know. Hello. Hi, I'm uh, Blair Kerr from Promoting Kewani. Um We've got the application form. Um, currently working with a couple of people from um, the communities group just to, to help us make sure have our, our critical people looking over it for us and, and Rosemary's words. Um, just uh, there's, there's three uh, groups we can apply for, the 1,500, the 5,000, the 10,000. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I was trying to keep it small, you know, 1,500. Um, the, the idea that we have is uh, centred around uh, litter picking and giving people their, their own uh, 
we call it adopt a spot from promoting co-winning. Uh, yeah. But aim it towards yeah. mental health, so that getting people out, giving them a focus uh, to, to keep their area tidy, and then give them the responsibility to, you know, put their stuff on Facebook. You know, they've been out to pick, that's what they've got, etc. Give them like their own kits. So from a like a health and safety point of view, they have their own gloves, they have their own uh, litter picker, their own high vis vest, so it's not getting shared about and things like that as well. Uh, yeah. I I just wondered. I mean, the, the the rough kind of figures I was looking at just now, it's sitting about. 1650 can kind of idea and from a from a group we don't yeah. mind putting money towards the project that's not a problem at all but i'm just wondering if i try and make it a little bit bigger say uh -huh. for example to go uh -huh. like two thousand two and a half and um, could we apply for that within the five thousand pound budget we're obviously not wanting the full five thousand though it's a good question and it's one that we're probably going to have to think about as we get them in and discuss um Part of me thinks to apply for the 1500 if it was just going to be above. But then yep. part of me thinks if you could make it bigger, like the 2500, try and make it bigger more toward the 5000, like yep. different areas and stuff like that. Gillian, I don't know what thoughts you th have on it. I, th I think this is one of the, the things that we're, we're just going to have to deal with when the applications come in, because obviously we've got a, a total amount of money and if we get, you know, the idea was that previously each locality were given, you know, the same amount of money and and then the local communities were asked to vote if there were enough um, uh, groups that applied. Um, I think what we tried to do was demonstrate this time round that we wanted to offer both those larger pots of funding, um, something kind of mid-range and then up to the 1500s, which was similar to, to what we did before. Um, mm. So it's a kind of, until we know what we get in, um, and if you're only applying for one pot, then, you know, just because it's not, we're not asking people to make sure you've got £5,000 in an application, it's up to 5000 So it depends really where your total costs come in as to you know what you're applying for and it really be down to who else is applying for the for the funds as to you know whether or not we can we can fund it or not it's 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 like a piece of string i don't know really the exact answer to it i would say um yeah no, thank you that's all i think that's a fair point i think like Gillian says, Blair, like because of the amount of money like you're saying like the 2500 it's kind of sits in between the two but yeah like Gillian says as well, like it totally depends on what applications we get in. We won't know until we see the amount of applications and how many people apply and what the current landscape is going to look like. Um, but we try and encourage people obviously to try and if they're going for the 5,000 to be more towards the 5,000, if they're 1,500 more towards that kind of thing, just to give people a range, for example. Um, and if that is working with other organisations or trying to widen it, or make it bigger, mm -hmm. or then we definitely encourage that as well. Yeah. Right, okay. Thank, thank you. No worries. Uh, Kate, did you have a question? I did, yes. Um, it was just really a question of, um, I may have missed it in your presentation, but is it 100% funding or does it need to have any match with it? No, no, it's like we give the funding. Um, the reason we had the match funding in there was just other ideas extra it's mm -hmm. other ideas right, okay. extra um it could be um oh, two seconds i'll be right back Sorry about that. Put the snib on and lock my girlfriend at the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so the match funding was just like a um, alternative, um, just in case if people never got the funding. Um, something that was there that people could contact Rosemary about. Rosemary could talk about. Um, and I guess going back to the evaluation form, if you do get match funding, just to put that in there just so that we can see that it, it was kind of like um, something that went towards the project. That makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, do we have any other? Oh, Gavin, you've put your hand up. Sorry, on you go. Right, David, just just me again. Um, just <laughs> to say that um, if you're getting the applications in and they're, they're from the same area for very similar projects, uh -huh. um, could I suggest that it might be an idea to maybe sort of ask people to merge together on a project or work together rather than having three groups trying to work on three different planters at the same time? I'm not sure if that happened the last time, but certainly there's a, an undercurrent within the three towns of not all the past path work network of which it's quite considerable in the three towns is covered by any street scene maintenance right. and there's always a sort of undercurrent in the, the the facebook groups going it's muddy here it's muddy there and there's always been a prior to covid there was quite a talk about setting up a path maintenance group now i've sort of reached out again and tried to rattle a few cages but there's been nobody forthcoming for that right. but if suddenly a group came up with that i would certainly be interested in knowing about them if that's possible so that you could offer some support and maybe link them in with other people I've seen. I know Brian Keenan and Donald might be happy to be partnered with that as part of their groups and some of the activities of groups coming up. So okay. um, it would be useful for me as a community worker for the three towns to maybe get some heads up if there's any groups that are following the same ideas. So I guess from your your first point um, about kind of working together with the Green Health Development Fund, the one that we ran with the participatory budgeting, it was 1,000 across the six localities um, and we split it up within those six localities. So with this one, there's more scope for more partnership because you've got slightly more money. Um, and if it's to do like a wider food growing project within an area, um, off the top of my head, I know that a lot of um, allotments, uh, groups that had uh, space for food growing, I know a lot of them during kind of like lockdown COVID put a lot of their fruit and veg into it. Something under the comment mark on the trail of comments. Nancy, could you just, there we go, just disappeared. <laughs> Uh, must have realised it was unmute, uh, unmuted. So yeah, so there's beforehand that wasn't the case, but now definitely there is the case um, to work more towards a bigger project potentially. And then your other one was about any groups that are doing any cat and uh, path maintenance work and stuff like that. Is that kind of a request to kind of us look out for any groups that are interested in it just to pass on to you? Yeah, if you do, because um, there's there's a sort of undercurrent in separate different Facebook groups that I monitor, which has become part of my job over the COVID is. You can see when people start commenting about a part of a, the, the uh, why, do, why does the council not fix this bit? But actually, it's not part of the council network. Right. It's just a, a, a desire line that's built up over the years. Yeah, sure. um, and um, certainly, I was trying to get the pass for all guys. They, they, they've turned all their training online. So, But it's all part of what we're trying to figure out what we do during the next lockdown isolation pe period till this time next year, maybe. Sure. Um, so it's just from my point of view, just trying to support people. And just to point out if there's, there's a significant amount of money out there to help food develop, food poverty work. So, I mean, I've, people put that in, a, in the yeah. application, they'll get a, extra funding for it. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's, no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, Nancy, did you have a question at all? Sorry, I know you, you came off mute there, um, just in case. If so, just jump in. That awkward silence, just waiting. <laughs> uh, does anyone else have any questions? I can't see any other hands up. Um, if not, I'll just move on to the last wee sections of the kind of presentation um, and uh, just finish it off. If anyone has any questions towards the end or anything else pops up, they can always get in touch with me. Um, so what I'll do is I'm just going to switch back to the PowerPoint the now. Um, let's see. Uh, can everyone see the PowerPoint again? Just anyone say yay or nay? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can see it, David. Cool. Thanks very much. For that. So, yeah. So some other things just to finish up on, because we've been barred in here to do with Green Health Development Fund stuff is, um, for the remainder of this year. Um, our TCV, the Conservation Volunteers Community Network, is free in 2020. So this is something that was free in 2019. 
and was free in 2020. And obviously we were, most of us like stopped our activities, but it's available now. Um, but just to say that um, it's free again for the remainder of this year. So there's many benefits with that. Um, you don't have to, for example, you can join it for the remainder of this year and then you don't get tied into next year. It doesn't continue on or anything like that. So some of the benefits are discounted public liability and personal accidents and accident insurance, which is essential for groups carrying out practical tasks. Exclusive act access to TCB's community network website created to provide our community network members with support they need in one easy to access place. There's a range of special negotiated discounts from TCV suppliers of tools, trees, seeds, equipment, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, funding support. So TCV can help groups find funding with information from Grant Finder that um, Rosemary mentioned or through the Chestnut Fund. Uh, discounted access to our online conservation handbooks. So the definitive guides to managing the countryside and green space. And these handbooks are amazing. They range from urban to very specific projects like a uh, large tree planting, um, wildflower, meadow maintenance, all sorts of stuff. Um, support and guidance covering a range of topics from health and safety to planting a wildflower meadow. So optional free listing of your contact details and web address in the Conservation Volunteers website. The Community Hub, which allows you to keep a membership database, record details of your work and sites you improve, email your members and create reports to celebrate achievements. And I know this is something that <laughs> Gavin's there. He was banging the drum last year and uh, beginning of this year about trying to get groups up for it. So um, please do get in touch with me about this. Like it's free for the remainder. I know it's a short period of the time, but you could utilize it in any way you wanted to get like discount and handbooks or any of that kind of stuff, any way that you need to use it or any kind of insurance or anything. Um, the other thing that we wanted to mention for this as well is just slightly different is we received an email from one of the community link workers, Leanne Killen, about this supporting people and communities, a call for ideas. So the government want to hear um, your ideas, so groups, community groups, uh, ideas, and learn from the response to the COVID pandemic. So the Social Renewal Advisory Board wants to understand how groups have been supporting people and communities at risk, both before and during COVID. Uh, they want to make sure that the lessons they've learned on how to support your community through a crisis and the ideas you have from that experience about what you need to change to help build a fairer, more equal Scotland. Any organisation, uh, group or community can offer ideas. The link here as well. If anyone's interested in it, again, similar to the presentation or any of the kind of uh, forms for the fund, just send me an email and I can send this stuff to you. Um, so how you submit your ideas. Um, so we as a GHP right now, uh, North Asia Green Health Partnership, we're considering how best we do this as well, because obviously it's a big part of how the work that we do. So you submit your ideas, fill them out in a form on the web page, uh, your idea, some extra details, if you know them, such as what you've learned from COVID experience to inform your idea. If there is a particular group or community that benefit from your idea, your idea has any implications for equality or human rights and how your idea would help us achieve the principles of social renewal, make the country a more equal place, reduce levels of poverty and disadvantage and help people live happier lives. What evidence you have that supports your idea, send completed forms to the Social Renewal Advisory Board Secretariat. So that's that one there. If there is any accompanying evidence that would support the information you're sharing, please attach to this too. So yeah, that's something as we as I was saying, we as a GHP do, because obviously it's impacted all of our work so much as well. And uh, we're looking into that, but it's available for anyone here to do um, as well. Um, and just before we finish up, because I know it says thank you here, I'm actually going to share um, something else um, that Adeka has been doing and she just would like to share with you. So I'm just going to share, where is it? It's this one, but why is it not sharing it? Oh no, there it is. Uh, there we go. Right. Do you want to talk about this then, Adeka? Yes. Hi, everyone. I know some familiar faces uh, to the others. I'm Adeka. I am one of the ones that deliver some of the activities from the Green Health Partnership. Uh, I have a health walk in Castle Park 
and I know Marjorie from there, and a Green Gym, which is a conservation group. Days, uh, and we meet in Kilwinin Library. As part of my project as well, I am um, my project changed slightly, so now my remit, my remit covers all North Asia. And as part of my new remit, it's about helping other organizations that are doing outdoor activities as well and providing them with some trainings that they can provide to their groups. So I came up with some themes uh, that could possibly help uh, some of these groups. Um, so as you can see, uh, I can provide training or get an expert to provide training on the following things. And this could be really good ideas on how to connect uh, people of the community, uh, your volunteers, um, or any groups that will be interested. And this will be uh, trainings for project coordinators. So one project coordinator will come and learn how to do it and then pass it on to the other group. So these are just some ideas that I came up today. So some of the theme, um, nature themes I thought about was like winter tree ID walk or discovering bats, making birds and bat boxes, uh, creating a vegetable garden, how to survey our coast, uh, making a wildflower meadow, learning how, uh, learning about amphibians, wildlife photography, and any other topics. So. I am going to say, well, I'm going to put this in the chat and as well, David can send this to you. And if you're interested in any of these topics, you can just put an X next to it and then I'll gather all the information from that and contact you later on when I, I organize some dates. Other organizational themes I thought as well, we have a green gym training, which is just how to run outdoor sessions and it covers things like risk assessments, uh, how to recruit new volunteers, what tool do you need, and all of those sort of things as well about fundraising. And I think this is a great opportunity to talk about this of fundraising because it goes through application process and all the information that you need to go through. But I guess in a little bit more detail than a 20 minutes time that we had today with Rosemary as well about a uh, there could be some other uh, trainings about community engagement uh, dealing with difficult volunteer situations uh, one that i think will be quite useful at the moment is a, a guidance on how to make your project activity safe during the coronavirus pandemic and it's going to be focused on on the guidance that we have in tcb but it covers every single aspect of all the different activities and then all your replies, you can send it to my email directly. And if you have any questions as well. Uh, but if you have any other topics that you think are more suitable and, and your organization is more interested, you can as well just just write them down and, and that will be really useful. Do you guys, does anyone have any questions for this? Yes, Helen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi. Thanks very much for that. Um, d does this apply to Aaron? Um, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, uh, I, I don't think why not, because I cover the whole North Asia. Um, so when we'll have these trainings, of course, people from Aaron can, uh, can participate in them. Yes, so it does apply for Adam. It does apply for the whole North Asia, so so it doesn't really matter from from where you are. Would you come to Aaron though, or would we? Uh, I'm I'm not sure at the moment. It will be something. Let's say I haven't planned yet the location directly. Some of them will be online, so right. anyone can participate. Uh, others will be uh, presential with a uh, smaller groups. So, yes, uh, I'm not sure if the location will be Aaron, but that will be something we can discuss later on. And I'll have that in mind as well, just yeah. to make it fair for everyone around North Asia that they're not all of them in urban. <laughs> OK. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Jennifer, do you have a question? Hi there. It's more of a specific, uh, you know, a, a question to the funding of the Green Health Partnership. Is there an overall annual budget for 
this year or you know do you know the amount of funding that will be available for this this you know set up until november are you do you mean like the not the different pots of funding do you mean the overall pot of funding how much money is there yeah i'm wondering how much overall is available it's so it's split into two because obviously we had the green health development fund via pb over 2018-19 and then we have three years of overall funding for the Green Health Partnership project currently. We were going to do it over obviously like kind of maybe three years or we had funding for the kind of three years to have 30K. So for example, as I said, 2018-19, we had 30K. Um, but for year two and year three, we both had 30K again, roughly. It's not exactly 30K, but it's roughly. So what we decided to do was to combine the two pots. So it's 60K overall. And that's why we decided because we had that money, we wanted to have, you know, pots of 1,500, 5,000 and uh, 10,000, basically. OK, thank you very much. But it's also just worth noting as well on that, that if we don't get enough applications through um, that are sort of meeting the requirements of the funds, then the, the entire fund doesn't won't necessarily be, be spent if we don't get enough applications through that are meeting the the aims of the, the Green Health Partnership. Okie dokies. Um, does anyone else have any other questions at all about anything? Um, if not, uh, then it's just to say, um, let's back up. So it's just to say thanks for listening um to us um so if you get any questions about anything today any of the information that you want then you can email me here um or on my mobile you can call me or text me um and um please follow us on twitter and facebook at any green health um the application forms like i say are up on www.nagreenhealth.org.uk you can get them from there or you can uh, use the link that was in the presentation to the community partnership planning page, um, or you can email Claire Carson. Um, all of this stuff is in the uh, criteria document, all that information and most of this, uh, all the stuff that was in the slides today as well. So yes, if nobody else has anything else to ask, then all that's left to say is just, um, oh, did you want Sorry, to say? I think I think there are two two hands up of Jenny Jennifer McDonald and Carol Jones. Sorry. Oh, Jennifer, is that a legacy hand? Is that a legacy hand? Right. Okay. Carol, sorry. Did you have a question? Yes. Yes, right. I did. Thanks. Um, you. Thank you for that. Um, during your presentation, you'd said about schools and nurseries can't actually apply as such on their own. However, yes. if there's somebody else like myself, I'm from the family learning team. I uh -huh. could um, do it. So um, you said you would um, speak more about that later on, but you never really touched on it after that. So could you maybe? Oh, it was well. It was just to say, like, for it wasn't really to go into loads and loads of detail, but it was uh -huh. basically to highlight some projects that had recently done it. So I could give you like the contacts, or I could ask the contacts from St Mark's Primary, for example, to contact you about that and how they went about that. So they they basically applied to us via the parent council. So that's why they got the funds for because they weren't it wasn't the school applying if you know what i mean it was the parent council yeah. was applying on behalf of the school to go towards that if that makes sense yeah, if you absolutely. wanted to go if you wanted to know more details because that was a very quick like run through of basically the funds that they got like i say it was funds to build a nursery garden i've got pictures i can send you and stuff like that of their garden etc but if you want to um if you want to talk more with the primary or the people who applied for the fund, I can try and get you involved in talking to them if that would help at all. Superb, that'd be yeah. superb. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'll do that. No worries. Um, is there any more for any more? Anyone else? Get any last minute hands or anything like that? No. Oh, no. OK, so yeah, thanks very much, everyone, um, for listening to me um, and staying. Oh, have you got a question, Joe? You need to unmute yourself. Are you waving bye? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, <okay. laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> it's okay. 
Uh, yeah, you I was there. just waving goodbye. <laughs> it's fine. That's okay. That's okay. Nice to hear your voice anyway, though, so it's okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if there's nothing else, guys, thanks very much for listening to this. Um, like I said, I've recorded it, so I'm going to stick it up somewhere or make it available somewhere. I don't know where yet, but um, I'll make it available for other groups and stuff like that as well. Um, I've got the Monday and Friday, 2 to 3 p.m. I've got um, these kind of virtual Q&A sessions. So even if you've been along to this one and you're partway through the application or you're partway through the criteria and you want to ask me other questions, then just let me know um, and I can have a conversation with you on that. Um, if not, text, phone, email, all that kind of stuff. Um, share the news, spread the word among other organisations, partner organisations, and uh, we look forward to some uh, lovely applications uh, on the 23rd of November. But uh, just to say thanks very much for sticking with us and uh, listening to me. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, thanks, David. David. Thank no you. worries. And take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 I guess just two other people were left in there. Uh, is this stopped? See if you hit the leave button at the very oh, there we go. Oh, you're gone. Robert's still here. Robert McNeese. I don't know if he's still here if it's gone. <laughs> Have you stopped recording, David? I I'm going to do it. No, there we go. This meeting is being recorded. Are you sure you want to stop recording? Stop.